Hey everybody, I'm Ryan. Today, we're going to talk about Magic the Gathering Worlds. Specifically, just a quick primer on what formats are being played, when those formats are being played, the structure of the tournament, and how the players that are playing there are qualified. If you're interested in the individual players that qualified and want a quick rundown on sort of a profile of each player, I posted a video about that uh, yesterday, and you should check that out on my channel. So there are 32 people playing in Worlds this year, and it'll be played entirely on Magic the Gathering Arena. The formats will be Dominaria United Draft, Standard, and Explorer. In order to qualify for this event, you needed to be the 2021 Magic World Champion, or finish in top six of any of the most recent championships, including the Innistrad Championship, the Neon Dynasty Championship, and the New Capenna Championship. If you're one of the top five MPL or Rivals players on World Championship points you qualified, or if you are in the top eight of non-MPL Rivals players in World Championship points you qualify. You get World Championship points by playing in uh, these other premier events. If a person qualified multiple ways, then that would create an at-large invitation. Uh, no at-large invitations happened at this World Championship. Ended up being pretty clean. On Friday, October 28th, the first three rounds are going to be Dominaria United Draft played within pods, not in leagues. That means you're going to play people from within your pod of draft, from within the eight people that drafted alongside you. Then they're going to be playing five rounds of standard. On day two, they'll be playing six rounds of Explorer, again, all of this on MTG Arena, and then it will cut to a top four, where they will play standard in the top four, and we will find out who our world champion is. At this world championship, there will be $500,000, that's half a million dollars in prize money given out. Just by showing up, you receive $7,500. Top 16, you will receive $10,000. Top 12, you will receive $15,000. Top 18, $20,000. Top 4, $25,000. Coming in second, we'll get $50,000. And winning the world championship will be $100,000. In addition to qualifying for the next year's world championship, the top four will also qualify for all of the Pro Tours this season. In addition to that, the deck lists of the people playing in the World Championship have already been released. The standard deck lists are kind of incredible. 68.8%, that's 22 people at the World Championships have chosen to play Esper Midrange, which is kind of astounding. Like, I knew Esper Midrange was one of the decks to beat, but I felt like it was pretty close to Jund Midrange and like the mono blue tempo deck. So I'm really surprised so many people landed on Esper. I mean, wedding announcement is nuts, so I guess it's fine. Explorer is a little more spread out. Explorer is enough like Pioneer, except the big thing about Explorer is that there's no Nykthos, so you don't have to worry about mono green devotion, so it's a little more wide open. And so, understandably, the top two decks, Abzi and Grease Fang with eight people, Racto Sacrifice with seven people, uh, Mono Blue Spirits with five, uh, Teamer Transmogrify, which is uh, sounds like a kind of interesting deck with four. It makes sense that the decks that are already good in Pioneer rise to the top, uh, especially decks that maybe are less successful because of the existence of Mono Green and Pioneer. As with every year, this is going to prove to be like a really fun and cool uh, worlds to watch. I'm excited to watch some Explorer because that's a format I'm a lot less involved in than Pioneer or Standard or Modern for that matter. And so we will see how all of this plays out this weekend. If you like this video, if you like quick rundowns like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. Check me out on social media. Links are above me in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.